Well, hello and welcome to our review of the Panono. And the Panono is a 36 camera, fixed focus camera sensor from Germany, something we've been waiting for over two years for. This particular sensor fires all 36 cameras in the same moment of time, capturing things that are even in motion in their location at the time the camera's triggered. Typically in 360 panos, we've had the obstacle of having a lapse in time. Therefore, we have artifacts that travel from one frame to another. And in this particular solution is pretty magical because it captures a full sphere of imagery, excepting, of course, right around the base of your tripod, uh, in one moment. And there is no extra um, nodal ninja type system to take stops and then bring them into your stitching solution. This is HDR capable. Uh, they recommend to only use the HDR mode naturally in tripod mode so that the sphere is static. Uh, one of the other neat pieces about this is that it uploads the photos or the photos are meant to be uploaded to its cloud server. So they have their own, their own proprietary algorithm that will auto stitch these photos. Um, they do allow you to uh, extract the individual 36 JPEGs and use your own solution and templates in your software of choice as well. However, in my initial testing, I found their cloud processing to be very, very good. One of the things uh, I'd like to say is that this is a 108 megapixel sphere, and that's high. That's much higher than we currently have on the market. They claim to be the highest on the market, and for a singles 360 sphere solution, they currently have the best solution. Uh, it is 11 centimeters in diameter, um, and it is capable internally of capturing 16 gigabytes of data, which translates into about 600 standard panos. Uh, that, that, that would not be the number in an HDR scenario. Um, you could divide that by a factor of three. I'm not entirely sure that's really the case. I think they have a little different uh, method in their HDR. Uh, so I think I think there is a, a little different approach there. So it's not a not a 200 photo for HDR type thing. Nonetheless, the 16 gigabytes shouldn't be a worry to anyone. It is a temporary holding place for photos, because once those photos are taken, you want to wirelessly transfer them to your device of choice. Here I have an iPad Mini. Uh, this is iPad Mini uh, 3, and this here is capable of connecting via, via Wi-Fi. In fact, right now, I'm gonna bring it up to the screen and hopefully this is captured, but I'm connected to my local Wi-Fi extension. You will actually see I have the camera turned on. And what, sh what I should show you before I proceed is that on the top of the camera, there is a light. That's the LED indicator to let you know that the camera is on. And it's also always outputting its Wi-Fi output so that it can be connected to. On this camera, on a location you cannot see from this video is a password that is in the case so that you can read it on the side and never really lose it and I think that's a great thing. So getting back to connecting, we have the camera on and this will remember, it's, it treats it as a Wi-Fi network. Here we can see there's a Panono. We click on that. I've already entered the password which you are not going to see. We're going to go ahead and look at this and now we can see that this, this, uh, this uh, we have connectivity on, on the iPad. Um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to open up the application, which I've already logged into. You'll see that I've logged into it. And when I click on that, it's going to show me panels that I've taken already. And I think that's kind of a neat piece. Um, you'll see that some are indicated on the upper right hand corner with HDR, others are not, meaning that there was an HDR versus non HDR. So these are looking at a little thumbnail that's created within the camera. So once the camera um, takes a photo, this is not the fully stitched photo, it's a partially stitched photo. And you can see a preview of that photo um, by selecting that. When you select a, a predetermined photo, you can see in the, uh, in the image here how it, how it will take in tile and it appears as these um, hexagons uh, of imagery as it overlays the imagery. Now this is a rough stitching and uh, basically what this does is it allows allows you to quickly preview 
the capture and what you got in that frame. It's not meant to showcase the final product because this has not been up to, uploaded to the cloud yet. Um, you can edit the title and things like that. So we're going to go back uh, back to the, uh, the uh, overall here. And down on the bottom, you're going to see here's the capture button and the settings button as well. Um, the settings of the camera are very simple at this point. Exposure mode is set to auto, but they have a exposure time. Uh, looks like it's at one one thousandth of a second. Um, the ISO set to 100 currently, and it's set to 5500K um, on the manual mode. Uh, now the sensor is going to be auto balancing itself though, so these are misleading because they're they're going to be um, auto exposed and they're going to be auto balanced. So you'd really need to know your application to use that. The last option is the HDR tripod usage only, and that's once again for that static mode. Uh, being able to take a minimum of three frames to get the best lighting exposure um, in there. So if we go back to this, uh, it's as easy as having your application open. I have an iPod, iPad here. My iPhone is what I'm using to capture this video. Um, but I'll take a 360 photo right now, and uh, we'll have this on, on board there. So you'll be able to capture that. Hit the button. You hear a double beep. In that period of time, you'll immediately see a preview pop up. There is my garage. There I am. Describing, you can see the mess I have on the ceiling, but nonetheless, you see the entire uh, preview already on that uh, on that uh, photo. So we have really good coverage. I understand I got everything I need, and I can move on. I can now move the, the tripod to a new location. Uh, that's really, really neat. So once I'm, I'm done, um, at the very bottom, if I'm back in this photo and I want to go ahead and process it, uh, I can on the very, very lower left, uh, there's an ability to download that. What this download button is going to do is it is going to transfer via Wi-Fi the files for that HDR 360 photo onto this iPad. It's not going to upload them to the server at this time, so it's a twofold um, a twofold uh, process uh, when you're using uh, this. Uh, device. Um, it does appear that they have an op opportunity to get the USB direct so you can download it to your computer. I haven't had luck with it yet but I haven't really played around with it uh, in detail. Um, but I did try a couple times on uh, getting it to recognize. One of the things I, I found challenging is the driver didn't seem to be readily available for the device and therefore it wasn't uh, being recognized easily. But there's a number of things that could be the, the, the case there. So while I was talking, this is already downloaded, and so basically that means all those photos and the content proprietary to creating that 360 pano uh, is now on my device. And now I have the option to go into this device and be able to upload that to the cloud. And there's a little check mark on the left here. So once I, I strike down on that, let's see if I can go back into my... My, my photos here. So you'll see <clears throat> this. Uh, there's a little spike uh, in the bottom. I'm not sure what that is meant to indicate. What I found it to be is the, the things that are on board. So uh, just to clarify, <clears throat> when you see the photos in the, the main camera map, these are looking at photos that reside on the memory of the Panono. In this case, uh, when I select this, these show uh, photos that have been downloaded to this device and this device only and so that's kind of the key there um, what you can see here is is there's a little green message it says ready to upload and there's a little green arrow on the side this is my opportunity to upload that right now I'm connected Wi-Fi via Wi-Fi to this so I would need to disconnect from the camera prior to uploading but now I have the images safely on here and on here. So I'm very excited for this for a couple reasons. Number one, you saw how fast that image was. Number two, how fast it gave you an auto-stitched view to ensure that what you were trying to capture was captured. Number three, this particular sensor has a number of, of features that I have yet to show. I'm going to go ahead and take it off here now um, by turning it off. You press, you press the button to turn it off. You hear a little beep and it is, it is off. I'm going to go ahead and remove it from the tripod here and bring it closer to the camera. One of the key pieces here is that it has a um, has a uh, lanyard loop. And that lanyard loop is something where you can actually hang the camera. 
And I think that's a powerful thing because it now allows you to hang it over the edge of something, hang it into something, or hang it uh, in a way that you could bring it alongside something. And I, I think that's a, a powerful little mechanism that they made sure to, to include. The lanyard is meant to bear weight. The neat thing too is that they were very intelligent in this and I was worried about this piece because when you put these lanyard ties, you're going to notice that there's four of them. Um, I stand corrected, there's three and the three will create stability. So now when I have three, I can have three string lines once again, thinking about fishing line. And now I can rig that up so it becomes seamless. It seems as if you're floating in the air. I have the ability now to remove the tripod, remove any holdings of any sort, get out of the frame and trigger it. And it really becomes a floating sphere instead of me taking the risk of throwing it in the air. I think that's a really powerful thing. You can see I'm already inverting it, by the way, by this particular piece. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, engineer uh, a piece that would take um, advantage of these uh, lanyard locations. Um, I, I may use paracord uh, as a beginning point since I trust paracord and paracord is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, I may de develop uh, a uh, kind of an aluminum uh, quick release uh, clip uh, as, a, uh, as an incorporation to that, um, but it's just fine as it stands uh, on its own here. So. Uh, once again, uh, here's the camera. Uh, the, the cameras are nice and inset. Um, it's very, very fast. Seems to have excellent battery life. Um, the photos are amazingly quick. Um, once again, it's very small, very portable. Um, it captures everything in motion at one time. It auto stitches. It's got memory in, inside, once again, 16 gigabytes, which is not meant to hold all the photos. They're meant to be cleared out daily you know you go do a day of shooting it's you know 600 captures is a lot you're, you're it's pretty unlikely you're gonna hit 600 captures in a day and even if you are you're probably not going to want to redo that work you're probably going to take a break during that day during lunch or your break and download them to a PC so anyway very impressed with this um, multiple devices can connect to it it's easy to use this is what we call a disruptive sensor, and I'm very happy to have it. I'll be taking different uh, different uh, photos with it uh, throughout uh, this next uh, few months, uh, really hopefully these next few weeks. Uh, we're in the rainy season as we speak, coming into spring. However, there are opportunities. I will try to capture different lighting, uh, lighting scenarios, um, be it in darkness, be it in light, uh, playing around with the different HDR settings and find some ideal um, ideal settings for those type of environments. Perhaps some of the manual adjustments will play into that as well. One of the things we do plan to do is to integrate this with our color program and color software that we currently are uh, using to serve our 360 photo experience on our globalgeometrics.com site. We're very excited that this kind of sensor will save us a lot of time and allow us to deliver content that's meaningful uh, to our clients and to us uh, in an accessible way. And uh, one, once again, I'm just very impressed uh, with the actual sensor itself after finally seeing it. Um, it, was, it took so long and uh, this by far is the best camera on the market in my opinion uh, for what you get. Um, I'm reasonably happy with the first edition. I can see that they can only improve um, and they will be one of the, uh, the most disruptive sensors uh, of 2016-2017. Very happy uh, that we have one, very happy to work with it, and we're going to see some amazing content. Uh, any, other, any other things I can think about? Uh, once again, in the left corner of the screen, uh, you should be able to see um, the, uh, the captures there. Um, I can't remember in this video if I mentioned the tripod. It's a Mifoto uh, Globetrotter. It's carbon fiber. Uh, ultra um, ultra light, ultra strong. Uh, it's capable of carrying 37 pounds and one of the legs will um, unscrew itself and turn into a monopod. The center section will then set upon that and allow you a nice staff of photos. So you can imagine being in a closed space, being able to utilize that or even reach down into a space. Um, I'll have to continue to play with those things, know what the structural uh, integrity is, what the wear items are, and, and what the best effects are. Uh, a couple other things that come to mind, of course, are you know how well this is going to do in dark. 
uh, darkness uh, using diffused light is going to be a challenge. Um, once again, uh, utilizing that that piece. Uh, another thing I've been thinking about, uh, of course, is is a disc of some sort uh, to take, basically tie in that base. Uh, we use our photo stitching software to put our company logo at the base of the photo, uh, so it hides the tripod. Um, that's one thing I like about a, a, a tra actual tripod camera like this, uh, or a, a ultralight tripod, is you can get these legs really close together, and you don't need much, and you are sta you're absolutely stable, and you're eliminated that footprint, so your capture of everything below is just excellent. And with the overlap of cameras, you really only have these knobs that really get in the frame based on the distance that it's offset. So uh, that's pretty impressive. Once again, uh, you're kind of seeing the, the final, the final uh, ultimate setup in my mind as far as how we're going to use it. Once again, carbon fiber tripod, monopod built in. You got the extension here. Uh, there is an extension handle that has a trigger on it. Um, I don't know how much we'll get to use that. I kind of envision using that for uh, ceiling panels, uh, perhaps to quickly get within a vault space, uh, if anything. Um, but uh, probably not a lot more you know, than that. Um, I'll uh, once again start posting these and uh, we'll put them on our photo experience along with our UAS uh, 360 photo experience. Um, and that'll be uh, really exciting, I think, to, to showcase that. Uh, you'll see a lot more videos here too. Uh, this is this is my shop. Uh, this is where I work. You know, this is a very small corner of that shop, um, but this is uh, kind of where I'm, I'm going to continue to work. I feel like uh, it's a good space for it. I have whiteboards in the background uh, to describe additional things uh, in the video, and also for information you can see while the video is playing. Uh, Anyway, well, that's it. Uh, this is the, once again, the Pinono. Uh, we're in February of 2016. Very happy to have the sensor. Um, I'm impressed from top to bottom. I don't think there's anything wrong with this thing. I'm um, just amazed uh, with this type of technology and very excited with the content we can generate.